guys, I am still Regina, but we are now in round two out of six here at the first PC for the first event for uh, so for SoCal in BBC 2020. It got extremely quiet behind me, so um, you gotta love when you have a room full of 60-something people and it's just almost super quiet. We've got Jose and Emmanuel up on here. Um, on your left, you've got that grim style Durant. I know someone who will appreciate that. Charizard, Munsdale, Whimsicott, and Inteleon. And on the right, you've got um, that Excadrill, Char uh, Charizard again, Grimmsnarl, Whimsicott, Galarian Weezing, and Rotom Wash. So a little bit of a mix up here. Um, friendly reminder that Gigamax Charizard is legal only if you do if you use Blaze, not Solar Power. However, I do know a lot of people are appreciating Solar Power and Life Orb because it gives Charizard that kind of extra punch it needs to pick up some knockouts. Um, Grimmsnarl obviously getting the Prankster and the Light Screen up, and everyone's favorite little cotton ball, except for mine probably, is that Whimsicott, who also has ability for Prankster. Um, back in Gen 5, did get affected by sort of a nerf to it, so it does not affect any sort of dark type Pokemon. However, Grimmsnarl can is very unique in that sense that it is both, both dark and fairy type. Durant, I know, has been climbing up a little bit in ladder because of the fact that it gets um, Hustle, which does lower your accuracy but boosts your attack. Not super liking the Charizard matchups though, which is why I'm guessing we're seeing the Rotom Wash and the Inteleon here as a way to balance that. So some kind of cool sort of core teams showing up here. Um, and again, the real battle is in your car trainer cards. So I was semi-encouraged to use the EV background in mine, so. Um, my training mode is up and running here. We've got the Whimsicott and Exodrill on um, Jose's side of the field. Gonna have a pretty good lead there, but Whimsicott and Charizard, so double Whimsicott. We are gonna get double Prankster on the field. One side a little bit of an advantage over the other, however, both can set up Tailwinds if they want to, to mash them. Um, the important thing here is going to be that Excadrill and the Charizard because Charizard's not going to like any sort of rock type moves here that that Excadrill might have. Um, but Charizard, if it is that non um, Gigantamax form, is not going to be able to take it very well. Again, Solar Power, a really, really good Titan to have here. Um, we are going to see a switch out here though instead of any sort of Dynamaxing on this turn. Inteleon coming out onto the field, those water type moves are going to help out a lot against an extra drill. And Emmanuel's Whimsicott actually setting up Tailwind first when we have a switcheroo instead. So it is going to change the items uh, between itself and the opponent. So the eject button is going to go into that Inteleon. We have that rock slide. So it is a trick that we've seen some people try to make popular here with the Dynamax Pokemon that you might assume there. Inteleon going to be forced to switch out with that eject button. Um, so cars are not going to be taking super effective damage that Inteleon still taking some pretty heavy um, damage from that rock slide but don't have to worry about Charizard the more heavy hitter here I'm gonna go down Durant gonna hit the field as the last Pokemon on Emmanuel's side so Durant not exactly um, a Pokemon in you know formats past where we've seen it really get a lot of usage however again that hustle and sort of that ability to kind of get those really nice steel type moves as well um, kind of make a weird contender here so Wimscott using safeguards are gonna perfect prevent any status effects from affecting its team and now Jose is going to set up that Tailwind. We'll set it up on the second turn of Emmanuel's Tailwind and gives him a speed advantage for the a couple turns later. I completely just missed what that <laughs> attack was but whatever it was that Excadrill is hanging on with 1 HP that Durant is oh was that that was not close combat was it oh my gosh so extra is gonna use earthquake to hit all pokemon on the side of field Durant going down unable to take down the extra drill because of that focus sash whimsicott's holding on here um but whimsicott's not a pokemon you really look at it and to yourself oh this pokemon's gonna do a lot of damage so jose able to kind of turn that around in this turn extra drill holding on with that uh focus sash but able to take out that Durant charizard is gonna have to make the like the most out of this last turn of tailwind on the manual side it is gonna not like any rock slide from that excadrill and jose after this turn is gonna have that speed advantage because he did set up tailwind later so whimsicott kind of proving its worth is still one of the more premier pranksters here um no as far as we can tell so far nobody has brought in their rims now but sunny day gonna help boost up that charizard for this turn making that sound extremely harsh and those fire type moves are gonna be absolutely terrifying uh, moonblast from jose's whimsicott is gonna pick up the knockout onto emmanuel's whimsicott i love playing this game trying to differentiate between everybody's uh, Whimsicott. Heat Wave boosted by the sun is going to easily knock out that Whimsicott because it's super effective damage. Picks up that one easy one HP on extra drill as well. But will also show us if there is an item on this Charizard, which that solar power is going to hurt it um, a little bit. And nothing else past that one. So no, no possible life orb on there. And I mean, 
there is a chance that Emmanuel can make this a little bit better for himself. However, Inteleon is not going to like this sun uh, being a water type Pokemon, and neither is that Rotom Wash. And we've got double Charizard, so again, sort of a mirror here in terms of we have both these Charizards and two water type Pokemon. So these water type Pokemon are not going to really appreciate the sun unless somebody chooses it to Dynamax. It still hasn't happened, which is kind of surprising so far. Uh, part of the strategy in this meta would be when do you decide to Dynamax, right? And having to figure that out has been kind of interesting to watch people go through as Inteleon is going to take that first Dynamax here. Um, any water type moves it will be using will change that weather and in rain as opposed to having the sun out. So a little bit of a different take on Weather Wars than we've seen in generations past. And we'll also have um, the Dynamaxing on Jose's side of the field. So both of them deciding, hey, you know what? We're down to our last two, so we might as well go for it. And it's going to be the Charizard instead of the Water-type Pokemon. So uh, that is not a um, Gigantinous Charizard. So it is most likely going to be Solar Power here, um, which, again, I think is the most common set right now on um, Charizard. Max guys are going to do super effective damage to that Charizard, however, not as much as it could do because of the fact that we have that sun up. However, Max Geyser is going to make it rain as it is the secondary effect of the water type Max moves. Heat Wave, now not going to really do much here because again, that weather did just change. This is one of those really kind of tough things where you have to figure out what the best option is. Max Airstream though, going to do a lot of damage and it's going to knock out the Charizard on a manual side and is going to give us uh, a speed boost to Jose's side, he is, um, that, that Tailwind not going to matter anymore because none of them can set it up. However, Max Airstream is going to work a little bit like that. Thunderbolt knocking out that Inteleon, giving Jose the win for this turn. So again, in the end, um, that Max Airstream probably didn't make much of a difference because he at least had the moves to be able to take that Inteleon. So Jose takes game one here and Emmanuel's going to have to figure out how he's going to want to work this, especially now that he knows that you've got that switch through Whimsicott, you've got the eject button on there. Um, again, a strategy that we've kind of seen get a really, really popular um, due to certain people, you know. Um, we are working here on, hey guys, here's here's your uh, spectator modes. So I still have no idea how this works. Miguel, thank you so much. You are the best. Um, so I think now if you are on, if you're thinking about this match again, you have to figure out when is the best time to set up Tailwind? How do I make the most use out of it? And when you're Dynamaxing, when is the best time to switch the weather? Because yes, Max Geyser is really nice to like take down Pokemon on the other side for super effective moves, but it also hinders yourself. I don't think you ever want to find yourself in a position where you just have Inteleon on Charizard together, right? So like, Durant was able to do a lot of damage to that Excadrill. The issue here is that now that you know Excadrill also has Focus Sash, how do you do it so that way that Rock Slide, which will hurt a lot of your Pokemon and has that chance to flinch, how do you stop it? And that's part of like what makes Extra Drill so good, right? If you manage to get something like Sand up, it becomes an even ter more terrifying Pokemon. Um, it has an, a wider array of abilities that make it very useful. You've got something like Mold Breaker, which makes it so you can even hit Rotom, who has Levitate, with any sort of like ground type moves. You've got um, the Sand Force, or Sand, no sorry, Sand Veil, which, you know, dealt, um, which Shoot. Nope, I can't remember the difference between that. I've been breeding so many ex I've been breeding so many drill bear, I can't remember the difference between their abilities anymore. Um but maybe a switch in which prankster you're gonna bring if you're not gonna set up Tailwind, if you wanna play a more defensive stalling game, then maybe bring in the Grim Snarl and set up light screen and reflect and make it so that your Pokemon have a little more oomph to stay in the game just a little bit longer. Dynamax moves also have all these all these secondary effects that might help for later on. So we've got Weezing and Extra Dose with a little bit of a change. A different fairy type here and Durant and Whimsicott so also a change here from Emmanuel so we do have uh, one Pokemon each the same Weezing having that Misty Surge uh, which is a weird thing to say out loud now that I think about it Misty Surge is going to make sure so that you don't uh, get affected by status moves if you're touching the ground that Durant we've seen it be kind of a strong force against that Excadrill um, and could actually uh, is could be a bit of a problem if he's not taking care of Whimsicott is going to be free to set up a Tailwind if it needs to, which it's going to do on this turn. So we're going to give Emmanuel that speed advantage for um, the next three or so turns, but Durant going for the Iron Head is going to connect with that Weezing, does super effective damage, and is going to be able to pick up that, um, that knockout and reveal an air balloon for the Weezing. So 
gonna be pretty interesting that I can keep it floating here. Earthquake here from the extra drill is gonna hit both that Durant and that Women's Cot and not gonna do that much damage, like gonna make it so that this Durant is still a little bit terrifying. It is gonna be faster now. Um, Lowered accuracy, of course, is something that if you're running Durant with Hustle, you wanna be concerned about, but great time to actually bring in that Charizard. There's not a lot that dirt that uh, dirt or once I got can really do to touch this Charizard. It's free to kind of just go for attacks. It can go for the Dynamax now. It can go for um, a Max Airstream and take out either one of these Pokemon on a manual side and get the speed boost for both its Pokemon so that when Tailwind does run out eventually on a manual side, that Jose will have the faster Pokemon here. So I think right now Jose has sort of like the more viable options despite being down one Pokemon and we are going to see him go for that Dynamax on this turn. I think that was the Charizard's Pokeball um, and I mean if you, we saw it use Max Airstream last game and we didn't really see anything past that so could be seeing some more moves from it right now. However I also think if you want to boost up your speed this is the best time to do it especially if you decided not to bring Whimsicott this game because Having the Rotom in the back might also help. Charizard are taking that Moonblast so easily because it resists that uh, super effective damage. But dang, uh, today I learned that Durant learns Rock Slide and can knock out this Dynamax Charizard. So now we'll never know what Jose was going to do with it. But good job on Emmanuel for identifying as the bigger threat here. And Iron Head going to go into that Wounds Cut will pick up that knockout. But Man, you know what, now if you're Jose having that extra drill, and what I'm assuming is the Rotom Wash in the back, that Durant is proving one tough bug to squish and get out of this game. It has been able to just kind of take a commanding lead here with, without Wimsicott setting it up. And Inteleon is going to be able to come into this game. We did see a Thunderbolt from it last game. Um, and Inteleon could go for a water type move onto the extra drill. We'll have to worry about sort of a thunderbolt from the Rotom Wash, but Durant has shown that it is not something to be ignored right now. Inteleon going for a protect, so won't get hit by anything this turn. Um, doesn't want to take any damage, and Durant going for the superpower will connect it to it was superpower last game. And will pick up the knockout now. Does take a lowering of its attack and defense for its troubles, but you've just got this Rotom Wash, which despite it having those offensive moves like Thunderbolt won't be enough to just kind of take care of the Inteleon, this Durant, and whatever last Pokemon Emmanuel decided to have in the back as his last Pokemon. Which means we are, unless all these Pokemon somehow miss their moves or Rotom just dodges things like a, I don't know, I don't know what to compare it to. Um, it is gonna be the game three. We see an Air Slash here, uh, does have that possibility for two possibilities now for those flinches. Single target rocks is gonna do a lot of damage here, especially with that life orb. There's that flinch. When you're running something like Air Slash and like Rock Slide, flinches could possibly happen, but Riddle able to at least get um, that HP back with its leftovers. But we do also see Tailwind um, expire on this turn on manual side. So Riddle might have a chance, is going to stall out with a Protect, probably trying to fish out to see what Emmanuel is going to try to do. So we will see another Air Slash from the Inteleon and most likely another um, Rock Slide here. So will not take the life loss from the Life Orb because of the fact that it didn't connect anything. Is going to get more HP back. So Jose trying his best to stall out and get his Rotom to get a little bit more HP as the turn goes along and Missy Train finally expiring on this turn. So any sort of status afflictions will be back into play for any Pokemon grounded that does not include Rotom because it has a levitate. So um, I think if both Durant and Inteleon can land or crit any of their moves, this Rotom is going to go down. Uh, it's going down very slowly and there is that rock slide. Oh, there's that avoid. And I feel really bad for saying that out loud now. Um, Inteleon going to go down very easily thanks to that Thunderbolt. Rotom going to gain back even more health. So, you know, actually this, this Rotom might actually be able to uh, turn this entire thing around. Um, if Durant can at least hold on or make <coughs> connections with its attacks and get those flinches, that's going to be the uh, the thing here to watch out for. Actually, I don't think Emmanuel Dynamax yet, so he could still do that, get that extra boost in power, and um, give this Rotom a sort of like a scare for its life. And I think we are going to see it. Yep, Dynamax on this turn, so Emmanuel just not going to take any chances, you want that extra damage, you want to guarantee yourself those knockouts, especially if this Rotom has proved to be more trouble than it's worth, managing to protect and get the leftovers of HP recovery, and to avoid a rock slide after that flinch, you definitely don't want that to happen again, so this Charizard is going to also Dynamax. 
Uh, and we see that this Char Charizard is also not a Gigantamax. Rock Slide connecting this time. Again, single target is going to do a lot more damage. Could possibly show that flinch here. Max Overgrowth going to connect. Super effective damage. Does have Grassy Terrain out on the field, but that Rotom will take that super effective damage. And we'll faint this turn, giving game two to Emmanuel and forcing us into a game three. So some really good adjustments from Emmanuel. Um, that idea that, hey, Durin is actually probably one of my stronger Pokemon that I can use and attack and let's go for it. It's especially only missing technically one move. That's pretty impressive right there. It was able to almost completely take care of Jose's team, but I will give props to Jose. That was actually a very well done battle. Um, using Protect to just to stall out for a turn so your Rotom gets a little bit more HP of recovery was really smart, right? And that's a strategy that we know people like to use. Like sometimes, even if you're down to your last Pokemon, it doesn't mean that the battle is over. It's a matter of understanding what resources do you have and is it possible to be able to turn it around? And it was actually extremely close in that regard, right? If you were able to maybe get another miss from um, that um, from that rock slide, you might have had a another turn to recover HP, protects all again, because that max overgrowth also just didn't exactly knock out that Rotom as fast as it could have seen on there. So I think if you're um, Jose, not really like the worst thing to use, I think maybe switching out Glare and Weezing, maybe for the last fairy type Pokemon on your team, because Excadrill, um, Charizard, and Rotom Wash, as a core and together in this team so far, have been done a really good job, right? And then on um, Emmanuel's side, like that Durant Whimsicott lead this game turned out to be a very good lead to use. Um, you are also, I guess, want to be careful of that Rotom Wash, because Inteleon does go down extremely fast with those Thunderbolts, but if it's your best it, it hasn't really shown much of its worth in terms of other uh, in terms of like the battle but maybe you don't have a better option at this point so the thought process now is what worked and what could be improved from game two and i think if you're emmanuel that durant whimsicott lead absolutely worked out for you and if you're um jose you think to yourself you know that game could have gone either way maybe but i have to figure out how can i get this rotom to be of more use in terms of knocking out other pokemon that galarian wheezy it's really cool to have neutralizing gas uh, or sorry it's really cool to have uh, misty terrain but it didn't really end up oh no miguel <laughs> sorry but i will say hey i will say i called it that grim style showed up um they did dc on there so um it is not just us it is actually both of the players so uh both players did dc so we will be um just redoing that match right yeah i mean they just barely started so they will connect again and they will um we will just assume that it's, it's like that game three just like never happened so far um so I will say I did see a Grimmsnarl and a Charizard, so I think Grimmsnarl is the right choice in this case, only because the thing about Grimmsnarl is being able to set up those reflects and the um, and the light screen. Very smart idea. It gives you again like a little bit more dis defensive capabilities for the general majority of the battle, especially if you pair with something like Light Clay, which makes it super annoying because instead of ending in like five turns, it goes to like eight or something. It's not exactly the best Pokemon that you want to try to contend with because like having the prankster and having the ability to set up speeds extremely fast, fantastic to get, uh, like fantastic to like use in that in that aspect. Um, on the other hand, again, if you're Emmanuel, I think uh, I don't think we actually even saw his lead like in that brief moment for game three. But I think you know, using that Durant and that Whimsicott when you pair it together, having sort of that Tailwind and that ability to go for an attack straight off. It's done. It's been super, super. Uh, it's done super well. So, and I think that's why we saw Jose use that Charmant, that Charizard, is because of the fact that Heat Wave will hit both Pokemon and both Whimsicott and Durant. Not fans of Fire type moves at all. So, um, we are still having a little bit of technical issues on our console. There is a very high chance that we may not be streaming this last match. I will be watching over the shoulder to see it, and then report to you guys on Twitter somehow if it doesn't uh, turn out that way. But. We'll see what happens. Um, so we will see what happens. Um, so we'll see. Again, we are having a little bit of technical issues. We'll see what goes on. Thank you. I'm collecting team sheets as I'm doing this, guys. I am a jack of all trades and a master of none today. Oh. 
Did you forget the uh, the code? No. no? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, we just got. Oh uh, yeah. Hey. So if you don't know the trick yet, when you switch your switch over, I think Serby posted about it a while ago. But switch stuff over from either Serby or Bella. I'm really sorry that I'm not cutting it to the correct person potentially at all right now either. Um, but if you don't know how to switch over your Pokemon from uh, sorry your switch from land to wireless, it is you hold L R and hold down the left control stick for about five to six seconds or however long it feels to be enough to be awkward but not long enough that it's justifiable um, and then it changes which is the general consensus on there so um, I just think we there's just a high possibility that we will not be streaming this third match I, we will be looking into how um, I guess East Coast managed to do it for so long but again thank you guys so much for your patience I hope so far you guys are at least enjoying uh, this format enjoying Swish I know I'm waiting for the day that both the GMAX Lapras and GMAX Salt Creamy are legal because those are my favorite. Uh, they are the best thing ever. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. I don't, I've been watching some battles here and there. I don't really know what I like um, personally for me to play. Um, there was a... I really love the Aditi Hatterene at one point and I thought that one was really fun. Um, I know that as a Trick Room variant has been sort of counter-teamed quite unquote lately um, but you know who really knows so um, I, don't, I think we're still figuring it out and I am taking team slips uh, sorry match slips in the background as things go on it's been kind of fun trying to do multiple things at once while this is going on uh, but we'll, we'll see. So, yeah, I'm going to try one more time for that spectator mode, and we're going to see how exactly it goes. Uh, so far, so good, though. I mean, the general energy of the room seems to be good. The general energy of my tummy is very unhappy with me. I have... <laughs> um, oh, here we go. Um, it is going to be up on stream for you guys right now. So, again, um, we've got the Grimmsnarl, Durant, Charizard, Mudsdale, Whimsicott, Intellion, on the left side and on the right side you've got the Excredal, Charizard, Grimmsnarl, Whimsicott, Galarian, Weezing, and Rotom. So just very minor differences in the team. Um, even their core, like, but their core ideas are also extremely different. Like even though you have the Charizard and the Whimsicott, the way you're running these teams are, are a little bit different as well, right? Like um, Jose has a little bit, I wouldn't want to say like less firepower, but he's got less Pokemon who can probably attack as hard. Like that Durin is probably going to be the most the scariest one out here. So we do see that Charizard and that Grimstone being the, the lead again for Jose. And Durin and Whimsicott, which worked in game two for Emmanuel, might not work in game three because of the fact that that Charizard has um, the potential for Heat Wave here. Right? It is it is a it is a Pokemon that has access to that move. And I mean, hey, if you're a Charizard and you see a Steel type um, Pokemon here and a a grass type, great to see uh, that fake out gonna hit that Whimsicott can't set up that tailwind. Charizard, the more important Pokemon on the side, avoiding that rock slide. It's gonna take no damage whatsoever from that. And Charizard going for a flamethrower, so might not actually have heat wave um, on this mod. Does pick up that easy KO on that Durin. And if you're Jose, that's what you wanna see. That Durin gave you so many problems in game two that right now, hey, you took out the heart, like one of the scariest attackers that this guy had on his team. Inteleon is on the field. Sure, it can hit you with a Max Geyser if it Dynamaxes. It can hit you with a Water type move. But you took out that Durant. That Durant, which hit its Rock Slides and caused flinches. That Durant with that Life Orb. That Durant, that like, hey, if you had an extra drill in the back, superpower, not gonna touch you now, right? If you've got that Grimst like that Grimstone on Jose's side, capable of setting up both uh, Light Screen and Reflect within the, like the next two turns. So. I think if you're him, you're going to go for that light screen on this turn to just make sure that you can at least take a little bit more attacks. You can also go for protects on this turn to at least stall out one turn of Dynamax, right? Because what's going to happen now is, yeah, you'll take some damage behind a protect, but it's not as much damage as you could have taken if you didn't protect. And if you're Jose, that Charizard is going to be pretty important to you right now, and you are going to choose to Dynamax it on this turn. So we are going to see kind of what happened in game one, which is that Inteleon and that Charizard, however, a lot earlier in the match than it happened last time so 
we are have that we are gonna have that sort of are we gonna get rain or are we gonna get sun as the last weather here um, again tailwind was set up for a couple of turns here but thunder wave from grim snarl is again prankster uh, priority is gonna make it so that intellion has a chance of being paralyzed on this turn what was that going for the moon boss is gonna do super effective damage to that grim snarl is the downside of having that dark type um that dark type typing and is gonna be it's gonna faint on this turn but you did manage to get that um Inteleon to be paralyzed which is also really important um does take a lot of damage from the max overgrowth not enough to get in the red or to knock it out and you are gonna set up grassy terrain which will heal all the pokemon except for jose's charizard which set it up um max geyser is also gonna come into play here we are gonna see that connect with charizard do super effective damage a lot more now on this turn because the last time i used max geyser on the screen there was sun up in play again rain is going to come back now because of the fact that geyser was used charizard going down on this trend does not take that easily at all and also here's the kicker it set up grassy terrain for emmanuel and he's going to be able to get that um the hp heal on these turns sure that intellion is paralyzed but if you've taken out that charizard already then maybe um oh no sorry that rotom is now on the field and that rotom's thunderbolt it it is going to be able to take out an Italian if it needs to. Excadrill sitting a little pretty here, you know, maybe not able to do super, super effective damage, but as long as you can take out that Inteleon, and then like Whimsicott could do some Moonblast stuff, um, is going to go for the Tailwind instead, so going to set up its partner in the back, which is most likely going to be that Charizard. Um, Inteleon, oof, you hate to see that, is going to be affected by that Paralyze on this turn as Iron Head connects into that Whimsicott, picks up that Knockout, and is going to... Whimsicott did its best. It at least managed to set up that Tailwind for this turn. Rotom goes for the Thunderbolt and is now up to the last Pokemon on the manual side of the field to be able to at least try to do a reverse sweep on this. Inteleon going down in sort of that dramatic fashion at, uh, once you've been knocked out during your Dynamax turns. I'm guessing we are going to see Emmanuel bring in that Charizard, which is going to be extra tough for him. There we go, because... Right now, Rain is set up. This Charizard's not going to be able to do anything with its fire type moves. Rotom is going to have a field day if it's got like something like Hydro Pump here. Excadrill, you click Rock Slide, Charizard's going to hate that single target and four times super effective. Barring any sort of, dare I say it, like connection error or Charizard being like an absolute beast and dodging everything, Jose kind of has this one in the back. But Rotom and that Excadrill, a really good set of Pokemon to have at the end of this game, especially against Charizard. In the rain. Solar Beam is going to take two turns to set up um, because of the fact that we are in rain. There is no sun to just make it a one turn move. Extra Drill connecting that rock side. That super effective damage. Single target is going to knock out. And just for the cherry on top of that critical hit, Charizard goes down on this turn, giving game three and the round to Jose. So. I mean, hey, it was pretty well fought <laughs> I mean, there. I mean, I, I think Jose adjusted <laughs> wonderfully. That was kind of a fun one to watch. So you know, you've got multiple Charizards, you've got multiple Whimsicots, and being given the chance to, like, adjust your team every single game for that, and then coming back from game two, though, that is something that's extremely invaluable. So both players did, I think, a really great job. Um, and as you can tell, it's getting a little bit louder in the back. So we will see you guys for round three out of six in just a little bit. As always, I'm Regina. Thank you for joining me, guys.